Hello, my name is Ketavon. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking all about my goals for 2023. Uh, well, not all of them, just the one that is probably the most important for me. I'll do another video with all the other ones later. But for now, this video is going to be focused just around book buying. So it's less of a goal. You know, I don't have a goal to buy books. I have a goal to buy less books, <laughs> so to speak. So last year I had a system in place that just really didn't work for me. Um, it was complicated and I'll get to that in a bit. But essentially I wanted to break down 2022 first and then talk about what I'm going to be doing in 2023 um, to sort of maybe hopefully make it better. We'll see. <laughs> so last year I bought 193 books and that's a lot. More than I would have guessed off the top of my head. It does include though, you know, I bought quite a few books that I knew I wasn't going to be reading that year. So for example, I bought all Everyman editions of every Jane Austen book, um, knowing I wouldn't read all of them that one year. I also bought a bunch of polyamory books that I knew I wasn't going to sit and binge all of them because they're for future videos and I, you know, they're on my shelf and I know I'll get to them at some point. But to me, it doesn't count as like real books, but I'm counting them all in here for the purposes of the video, just because I don't want to start getting into like, oh, that book doesn't count. This book doesn't count. Like I'm buying books. That's what I'm doing. They're on the shelf. It's fine. <laughs> we don't need to like make too many exceptions, but there are exceptions included in this. So 193, not too bad. Since I read 175 books last year, you might say to yourself at first, like, oh, that's not bad. Like you only have maybe an extra 20 books on the shelf that you didn't read. But no, that's not the case because only 60% of the books I read last year were from my bookshelf, whether I purchased them that year or they were sitting there from the year before. So that means I only read 52 of the 193 books that I purchased, which is like not great. <laughs> um, and then the other 63 were already from my shelf from the year before. So I, I'm happy with what I read last year. I'm not like going to beat myself up over it. But so this basically leaves me with about 250 plus books on my bookshelf that still need to be read. And that's fine. I'm not like super overwhelmed by that. I just don't want every year there to be a bit more and a bit more. And then in a few years, it's like, 600 800 and that would definitely be overwhelming because I'm not the type of person that wants to get to book zero I definitely want at least 100 unread books on my shelf like at all times I definitely want to have lots of options I, I definitely value the purpose of a library filled with unread books like that's they're there for you to enjoy when you want to but 250 that's too much for me I need to narrow it down a bit so so first we'll go through the books. So overall, I'll, I'll just, I have some fun charts that I'll pop up over here. I read about 28% of the books that I purchased. So that's not great. <laughs> um, but, you know, like I mentioned, there were some books that I planned to not read. There were some books that I picked up on a whim. And um, it, it is what it is. I'm not personally worried too much about book spending because I am... Uh, quite cheap when it comes to books. I don't want to just spend a lot of money on fancy editions or anything like that. And so if you look at my distribution of, of prices, you can see here that, you know, I, in general, the major, in general, the majority of books I'm buying are not expensive. So um, 60 or 70% of the books are less than 10 euro. And then the next largest chunk is between 10 and 15 euro, which is still very inexpensive for a book in Paris. And then there's this, this tiny thing. I have 14 books between 15 and 20, and then nine books that were above 20 euro. And usually those are books that like I could not get any cheaper, basically that's sort of like the the breakdown of how I spend on books. And so I'm pretty happy with that. I don't, you know, want to just buy a bunch of new fancy books. I like buying used books. I like discovering books via used bookstores. So that's all good. But in the middle of the year, I was like, oh, am I, am I spending too much money? Like, no, no, no. So I tried to prioritize the more expensive books. Like if I was buying a book that was new, I tried to read that like sooner than the others. And so then I started tracking purchase books by price, which I found interesting. So and I think I was pretty successful in that in the sense that if I broke down like how much I spent on books, I read 54 or 55% of the books that were purchased. So that's pretty good in comparison to the book count. Um, but like I said earlier, the problem still exists. I still have all these 250 plus books on my bookshelf. So the system for 2022 was really complicated. I don't even want to explain it here because it just, it makes no sense to me now, but it was very complicated where for different types of books, if I read a certain number and each type had a different number, then I could buy one book of that type. Um, whether it be, you know, and I had, and this was goal focused. So like, for example, 
I had a goal of reading translated literature. So for every two translated literature books I bought, I read from my bookshelf, I could buy one. And that made sense to me because I wanted it to incentivize me to read certain books. But in the end, I just ended up reading and buying whatever I felt like <laughs> anyway, because I was always like, oh, I'll just make up for it later. And that's fine if you actually do make up for it, but it just, I wasn't making up. I ended up cheating and um, it was just too complicated for me to track in the end. So about mid-year, I switched over to a new system, which was like a straight, you know, for every three books you read, you can buy a book. And that worked okay, um, except uh, in July, I went to Amsterdam and had no idea that there would be such a huge amount of like really quite inexpensive books. Um, books in Paris, new in a bookstore, are very, very expensive. And uh, I was just shocked to see so many like amazing, nice, new, relatively for me, inexpensive books. I got a little carried away. And basically after July, I never recovered. So I always was sort of like trying to catch up to like, I had purchased these, so I need to read these. And it just didn't happen. There's that. So, and the other big thing that happened is that I went to the US in um, September, October, I don't remember exactly. And of course, like it's, it's the United States, you have to stock up on cheap books while you're there. Like, I mean, that's like the cheapest place in the world to get books. So I'm not going to pass that opportunity just because of my little dumb system. <laughs> so basically, I, unfortunately, I, well, not unfortunately, I'm happy with all the books I bought, but I ended up with quite a few books um, for, from gifts. Um, I went to tons of libraries and got for not only free, like absolutely free books, but, you know, $1 books. I, and I, I, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> my new system is going to be streamlined and there's still going to be categories, but they're going to be not themes on the books, but rather focused around my book buying habits. So for example, Boulinier is a used bookstore. It's like, a, there's a chain, there's four locations in Paris and they have incredibly inexpensive books. One to three euro is usually what I pay. Um, sometimes they'll go up to five ish euro, but in general, the one by my house is very, very inexpensive and they usually have pretty good selection. It's very hit and miss. There's a, there's a small selection, but it's nice. And I really, really like browsing in there and I really love buying books from there. I've, I've some of my favorite books I found there and I didn't even know they existed until I saw them on the shelf at that bookstore. So I don't want to give that up, um, that browsing and like looking for books that you've never heard of. So for that system, I'm going to basically, every five books I read, I'm going to let myself purchase one Boulinier book or like one very inexpensive used book, essentially, um, that I like find on a whim, not planned at all. Like, I've never heard of it. I just see it in a bookstore. Cool. I bought it. So, you know, five for one, that's pretty good. And then every 15 books, I'm going to be able to purchase one planned book. So like a book like, oh, I've, I saw it on BookTube. I, it's been on my TBR and it's not at the library and I can't get it any other way. Those types of books. And whether I find it used or new doesn't matter. But like a planned, like I want that book, I'm getting that book. Those I'm going to save for every 15 books that I read off my shelf. When I do buy new books, um, especially those planned books where, you know, it's every 15 books off my shelf and I go out to, and I usually, I'm, I'm guessing I'm gonna have to order from a like, local bookstore here because um, online buying now is very fraught. <laughs> I won't go into the details, but the custom situation right now is like out of control. So I'm, I, my online book buying, I've like shut down just for like customs reasons. And if I'm paying the money for a new book, there's no reason why I shouldn't be wanting to read it right then and there. Because if I find a used book and it's a good deal, it makes sense to buy it now and read it later because you're getting the deal. But if, if I'm going to be paying full price, why am I not reading it right then and there? So for any new books that I purchase, I will definitely, my main goal is to be reading that book before I purchase another new book. And of course... <sighs> That sometimes won't happen because, you know, sometimes it does take a month or two for books to come in. Sometimes I'll buy a book specifically, you know, as more of a reference. We'll see how those little exceptions come up. I don't want there to be too many exceptions. Like, that's my goal is to have this be like a streamlined system. But we'll see if I need to make tweaks along the way. And then there's like the bigger book shopping. <laughs> Um, the two things, like I mentioned earlier, is the travel. Like when I travel, I generally like to walk around to different bookstores and look at them and buy from them. Like it's just, that's what I like to do on vacation. <laughs> Sue me. So I don't want to say I'm not allowed to do that, 
but I'm not sure what system exactly I'm going to put in place for that. And I was thinking of maybe just an actual like dollar limit, because usually when I'm traveling, unless I find a great book, used bookstore, they're generally new bookstores that I'm going to. And so maybe an actual like physical money limit will be helpful with that. But until I have a, a trip in my head where I need to do that, I, I'm going to sort of postpone that. But somehow I want to plan for trips without it like interfering with my normal system, but not go overboard at the same time. So maybe I'll, I'll just do like two books per week of a trip or something like that, like a two book limit, or maybe it'll be a dollar limit if I have a really good used bookstore. I don't know, but we'll see. Then the other like big ticket book purchasing habit of mine is I want to purchase more from independent presses. But the thing is when you buy directly from the publisher, it's very cost ineffective to just purchase one book and then you pay for the shipping, you pay for the customs and all that stuff. And you're basically doubling the price of the book for kind of nothing. I mean, other than the fact that you get that one book, but um, usually when I buy from publishers or, you know, whatever, you're buying at least like three to five books because otherwise it just doesn't make sense financially. So I want to sort of save those for like big, big ticket um, milestones, like for the 50th book I read, uh, for the 100th book I read um, off my pre-existing bookshelf. Then that way I will be able to put in an order or something and buy books that I can just have on my bookshelf. And the other big exception is of course book club books. So book club books, um, I kind of know that I'm going to be reading them and uh, I would say the majority of the time I can buy, find book club books like from the library and it's no big deal and that's I'm happy to can you know read that way but other times just the book I know I won't be able to enjoy it unless I have a physical copy and that's I mean obviously that's a judgment call for me I don't plan on like abusing this exception rule but essentially I will have no qualms about buying books for book club that are that I don't think I would get much out of otherwise if I didn't have a hard copy and, um, I'm not worried about that because the idea is if, I, if it's a book club book I'm going to have read it so it's not going to be adding on to my unread shelf. Oh, that reminds me, I need to talk about another little tweak to the system that takes into account just the reality of me buying books. <laughs> so I uh, last year unhauled a bunch of books, um, half I had read, half I hadn't read, um, but I just had outgrown them as a reader. This is also why I don't want to keep too many books on my shelf. Like I'm happy to unhaul books I've outgrown, but ideally I'd like to have grown by reading them <laughs> um, first before I unhaul them. So if you keep books on your shelf for too long, eventually you will outgrow them probably, unless they're like maybe classics. But essentially, last year I earned 100 euro from selling all these books to, to people on Facebook, book buying group on Facebook. And um, we usually sell books back and forth between each other. So essentially, I have this 100 euro and I said to myself, you know what, I'm gonna keep this set it aside, and this is gonna be my slush fund. <laughs> so when I am technically not allowed to buy a book and I really have to buy a book for whatever reason in my little head, then I'll be able to use this slush fund and that is just gonna be how it is because sometimes you just cannot um, avoid it. I mean, of course you can, you just don't want to, right? <laughs> so, and of course I've already used the slush fund. I know this is terrible. And I used it actually in December because I'd already cut myself off for December, but on like, I think December 27th or something, I got an email for this book that is out, has been out of print for many years. And all of a sudden it was back in print and all the sites that I was looking on, they each had only seven copies listed. And I was like, that's weird. Is seven like this magic round number that was distributed to everyone? Is it like code for like, we don't have a lot. I don't know. I wasn't sure. I was just like, I need to order it right now because you could not find this book anywhere. I mean, nowhere, not on a books, not on eBay. Literally I had searched and searched and searched and it was just, it's completely out of print. Not anymore. Um, so I wanted to buy it in case those seven copies were like the only copies available and I'm, that's probably not very realistic. I'm sure I could have waited at least a couple months, but I didn't want to take any chances because I really had searched for months looking for this book. So The Quiet Violence of Dreams by K. Sello um, Dyker is I believe how you say his name. So this author is a South African author. I have a few other books by him that I of course have not read yet, but 
He's deceased. He died at a very young age in his 30s from suicide, but he's written, I think, four books. And this is like the chunkiest book he's written. I didn't know it was this chunky when I bought it, but I don't care. And so this is the other thing is like, am I going to really read this 500 page book before I buy any other books? I don't know. So this is like, I'm considering it an exception book. If if I had seen that this was for sale and then like when I went to go buy it three months later, it was out of stock again, I would have really been upset with myself. So I used my slush fund. I like took it, you know, officially like, oh, I'm using this as a slush fund. And in a little bit, I'm going to have read 15 books off my bookshelf. And then this one will have been earned, I suppose. So, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> um, I already use the slush fund, but I'm really happy I use the slush fund. I'm not going to beat myself up for it. The slush fund is there for things that I like really want to do and it just doesn't fit into my rules. But then the whole point is that there's a cap, right? And I don't plan on ever like, you know, using up all hundred euro of my slush fund at once, like without having like earned the book. We'll see. <laughs> Who knows? I say that now in January and, and in December I'll be like, oh, I'm I have like 10 cents for my slush fund left or whatever. But basically my, my goal, I think will be more streamlined already this year. I've, I'm, I've already read 14 books off my bookshelf. So I'm one away from earning that first new book and I haven't even been to Boulogne yet. So I, I haven't purchased any books this year aside from the quiet violence of dreams, which technically was bought in December, but I'm counting it for 2023. Alrighty. So that is my whole book buying goals for 2023. I really hope that I stick with some plan, not necessarily this plan. It can change, but I'm hoping to reduce my books um, by maybe at least a hundred. That's probably gonna. I, I usually don't like to put like hard goals on anything, like numbers and stuff. But I think it would be kind of cool to to take off a hundred books of the shelf. It's strange. I actually have like a much more subjective or like it's a weird thing. But basically, I have my Calyx shelves. Um, I, maybe I'll pop in a picture here so you can see what I'm saying. But Essentially, I have these huge Calyx shelves and all the books I haven't read are in the front because I want to see what I haven't read and be able to pick from it. And all the books I have read are in the back. And in general, I don't keep a book unless I love it. So all the books that, are, that I've read and loved are in the back and I can never see them. <laughs> I never can look at them. One day when I have a place big enough, that's my goal. But as I've been like reducing from the shelf, I've noticed that like maybe a couple cubes are like emptying as I reorganize and reshuffle. And so my goal is to actually have the top four cubes actually be reserved for books that I've already loved and read. So I can see like a visual, you know, reduction of the unread books. And I have no idea how many books that would be. Um, I think you could probably do 15 books per cube. So that's, you know, that's like only 60 books across. So I think that's pretty reasonable. We'll see how it goes. But that's sort of my goal is to have to start being able to have the space to put books that I've read and loved visible on the outside, <laughs> and not just hidden away behind all the unread books. So we'll see how that goes. But anyway, thanks so much for joining me on this very rambly video about reading and buying books. Now, my next video will be about more like what kinds of books I want to be reading this year. Also very loosey goosey. I don't really have hard goals on that either, but I'll talk about my spreadsheet a little bit and, and just talk about stats um, from last year and how that's influencing my, my intentions and goals for this year. What I'm curious to know is how do you do this? Do you just like buy books on a whim and keep them? Do you have some sort of system in place? Um, do you do book buying bans? There's so many different ways of doing it. So I'm just really curious to see how other people do it and how, you know, you handle <laughs> the overwhelm on your shelf if there is some. Um, I know a lot of people don't have a lot of overwhelm. So I'm really just curious to see how people handle um, book buying specifically, like how, how, you frame it in your head or if there's a formal system or an informal system, whatever. Alrighty. So thank you for joining me on this video and until next time. Bye.